That's a wicked knob. That's the biggest jump I've ever seen off here. <laughs> Today, we are wrapping up our series about how to get the most out of spearfishing. We started off with relax, making sure that you're relaxed in your diving, relaxed in hunting fish. We secondly said the best way to relax is to enjoy it, is to make sure you're enjoying the diving. You just get in, not getting overwhelmed by the situations, not getting overwhelmed by everything that's going on. Just get in and enjoy that. Listen, if you missed those two, make sure you go back and watch them because they really lead into what we're talking about today. To jump off the back of enjoying it, I've found one of the greatest and easiest ways to enjoy it is to find the right people to enjoy it with. Now, I've got some awesome friends that I love spearfishing with. All of my friends are so similar in our ethos, so similar in what we enjoy. And one of the greatest things about the crew that I dive with is that none of us are competitive. Awesome footage, eh? It's so epic! That's freaking... So epic footage, that's epic. shark trying to eat it. I was right on the jogging. Jeez, <laughs> and then the shark that's tried to eat it. Right In fact, I would say this. Most of us get more excited when we see our friends shoot a good fish than when we just shoot a good fish ourselves. How's the knob? Oh, that's a wicked knob. Jonesy did it. <laughs> you want me to help? You, 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 you. On top of celebrating each other's fish, we actually enjoy diving together and often have a bunch of fun just hanging out together in the boat. This is criminal. You. Cheers, boys. The most important part of finding the right people to dive with is just simply finding people that are trustworthy. People that you trust with your life. Spearfishing is an inherently dangerous sport. We've seen a number of people over the last number of years die of shallow water blackout. We've seen a number of people over the last few years die being attacked by crocodiles. Obviously, one of the great dangers to us that we see a lot and is a growing and increasing danger is the danger of sharks. I am grateful that all of my friends are first and foremost there protecting me and protecting my fish whenever one of us are shooting a fish. On this dive, I followed Andrew Jones to the bottom. I noticed a bull shark coming in behind him, so I quickly swam to intercept it. This bull shark seemed like it was after him. I got between him and the bull shark. When we got to the surface after, Andrew Jones did not even see it at all, and it was me intercepting it that kept the fish away from him. Now, there is a problem sometimes though. All of my friends seem to have the same habit and it's the habit of shooting fish and getting them stuck in a hole. Unfortunately, nine times out of 10, my job is the fish retrieval expert and I'm sent down to pull some of those fish out of their holes. This first clip is Daniel Mann deciding he wants to shoot a Maori cod in a wreck in 35 meters of water, but shoot it inside the wreck. As you can see, there's a fair bit of knife duty as I'm cutting that fish out of that wreck. In these two clips, this is like 10 minutes apart. Hal dives, shoots a big jack and gets it stuck in a cave. We had to dive together, pull the thing out. It was a really good jack, it was over 10 kilos.
I shot him in the cheek, Kim. <laughs> Some cheek shot, huh? <laughs> that was a, well, he's also not as big as I thought he was. <laughs> Man, we'll get in the water. Do you know, man, where he said where he shot it? <laughs> have you, these fish, oh. these fish have got a what funny gill area. <laughs> like, see, this, see this gear, gill area here? <laughs> I shot it this side. I shot it right here. Ass gills. <laughs> <laughs> Ass gills. <laughs> Donkey gills. Donkey gills. You just see what? Oh. That's holding by like an inch of skin. Ten minutes later, Josh Ball decides he's going to do exactly the same thing. The next time I have to swim past a big grey nurse to get into that cave and pull his jack out. Both of these fish were shot in over 30 metres of water. Aside from the fish retrieval duties, I've got great friends that just make diving for me so much fun, so enjoyable, and we love spearfishing together. What I want to do through this episode is just go through some of those awesome moments that we've had with some of the people that I dive with. I'm going to start by highlighting my sons. Now I'm the sort of person that never wanted to push my sons into spearfishing. I always want my kids to find what they get excited about and what gets them pumped. Two of my sons love spearfishing with me. This first clip is my middle son. He was only young. This is one of the very first times he ever comes spearfishing with me. And he was hooked straight away. pointed out where the fish was and I went down and shot it. Ooh, biggest cod? Biggest fish? Oh, first cod ever. First cod ever. Yeah, buddy. Very cool. These next couple of clips are of my oldest son, Josh. Now, Josh actually did a lot of diving with me and is a phenomenal diver in his own right. He, at a young age, had a great eye and a great hunter and it's really just football and a young lady that's taking him away from his spearfishing. But these clips are when he was around the age of 15. This first one, we find a really nice pearl perch in really shallow water. People have messaged me heaps over the last couple of months saying, Tim, you have so much passion for spearfishing and we love seeing you get excited. <laughs> That's a belter! What do you believe that just happened? Is it eight metres of water. Is it's a big pearly. Is that a record? Mate, for Junior in Queensland, there's never been one shot. Take off his beard, that is such a good fish, mate. What are you oh, saying? Hold him up. Oh. Like that. Just roll his head a bit further forward. The second clip, we'd seen some nice cobia swim underneath us following a couple of rays. Josh dives and he places a great shot into that cobia. <laughs> Turn 
Now with my boys, I've also had a couple of hairy situations. I remember my dad and myself took the boys out diving locally and we'd seen a big bait ball and I thought, let's jump in, we might see a marlin. We jumped in on this bait ball and we didn't see any marlin, but gee, we saw some sharks. How you going? Reverse. You alright? Sharks. Sharks. Oh, 50 of them. We were being swarmed by every direction. You alright? I just feel like getting on your back. Hey? Oh, they just, they just were there. That was awesome. Sharks still get wild. You alright? Those sharks are scaring me. Like they came up from behind and then like I was like, oh, come on, dive. turn behind, turn around. I can see him, mate. Let me introduce you to Tia. This young woman is a very special young woman, has become a part of our family. And I took her diving a number of times. Now, she's a phenomenal athlete, a phenomenal football player. She, as a great athlete, was a natural in the water. And the first couple of times I took her diving, she shot Australian women's record fish that if she'd load the gun herself, would have been records. On this dive, she shot what would have been an Australian junior record purple tusk fish. For the rest of this video, I want to highlight some of the friends that I dive with and you're going to see some of the crazy stuff that has happened in our diving over the years. First up is Bryson Sheehy. In 2022, we won the Australian titles together. Bryson is a phenomenal diver, one of the people that I really love to dive with and he's helped grow my spearfishing and we've had some crazy adventures together. On this day, we were diving here locally and we're targeting Big Mulloway in quite deep water. You'll see as I head down to the bottom, I swim through a big school of giant trevally. As I look through those giant trevally, I can see milling on the sand a big school of Mulloway. In the middle of it is a big fat one and I pick it out. As I'm about to pull the trigger, the whole school spooks. Look to the side, there's sharks, there's trevally, and those jewfish just mill back across in front of me and I line up and stone the biggest of those jewfish. Now I'm glad that I did because Sharks come in straight away, and I head to the surface, pulling that jewfish up with me. A bad one. That's the biggest jew I've ever seen off here. I'm like, took so long to make sure I stoned that fish. Now, Bryson was actually on the bottom, and that jewfish school swam past him, and he picked off a jewfish as well. But Bryson returns to the surface just after me and he is followed by some big, angry bronze whalers. Yeah. 
Into the boat, Bry. Into the boat. What a cranky prick of a fish! Hey. How's that shark? Oh, <laughs> that shark! Oh, right at the top there you go. <laughs> I thought that fish was gone 100%. Now the young guy that is there pushing away that bronze whaler, his name is Kyle. He, at this stage, was about 18. But a couple of years earlier, when he was around the age of 16, we took him up north chasing Red Emperor. We got some really cool footage of Kyle diving. Again, very, very safe. We were all beside him. I was above him. We had someone mid-water, someone on the surface. Diving with him, when he shot his very first Red Emperor. We're all blown away, stoked for Kyle. Incredible fish, great fish for a 16 year old to shoot. Oh, man, you laid on the bottom for ages. Now, this is one of my really good mates, Daniel Mann. Now, Dan dives much of his diving throughout Europe, so I don't get to see him very often, but this was actually a trip that he flew back into Oz and I wrangled him into my boat just a couple of hours after he arrived in Brisbane. We'd done a bit of diving through the morning and it was around lunchtime, and we jumped in on a spot that had been really fishy in the weeks prior to him arriving. Dan was exhausted, so he actually curled up in the front of the boat and had to sleep. We're diving with another friend of ours, Jay, and my very first dive, I laid on the bottom and a really nice snapper comes straight into me. I'll be honest, I was a little bit excited to swim back to the boat knowing Dan was asleep in the boat and throw that big snapper on the floor. Yahoo! How much is it not going off down there? Oh. Yo! Sick! My camera on, please tell me my camera on. It's on, it's on, I'm filming. You're good, you're good. In the face. Just swam up to me, I strung him. Same hole? Instantly Dan was awake and I'm like, man, you gotta get in with me, this is going nuts. Dan jumped in, woke himself up a little bit, did a dive, hit the bottom.
and he too found those really good snapper. When he pulled it up, we were both absolutely stoked. Jay was stoked in the boat. Just great to land two incredible fish like this. Nice what, fish. Kilos, He's a cracker. How many did you see? Big ones in there, eh? Did you see more? First one come in and then it turned away like you prick. Come back, another one come in, turned away, I was like, stuff it. <laughs> and then I saw two coming in like, you were dead, that. So, dead. Third, so dead. Same deal, come from the south? Yep. You probably laid it the first time looking that way and they were coming in behind you. I looked at that, there was a big rock. So we just sat on that ledge and then there was like, like that scallop out there that just came straight over the top of that. Yep, exactly what they were doing. I miss Dan, I wish he was here, but you can find him as I do, follow his adventures on his own YouTube, which is Dive Everywhere with Daniel Mann. Next up is my mate Josh Ball. He's got one of those very unfortunate nicknames. For all of those that watch this that aren't Australians, let me say this, if an Australian gives you a nickname, it's a love thing. We call people whom we care about a lot funny, stupid names. If you haven't got a nickname, nobody likes you. Josh Ball's nickname is unfortunately for him, Ball Bag. Now, if ever you hear that on my videos, and he's featured in a lot of my videos and you would have seen him in the past, and I'm sure you'll see many of them in the future, he gets called that a lot. We love him and he's a great diver. This clip, we dive together, and I'll be honest, he makes it really difficult for me to shoot a fish. We hung there on the bottom. Mulloway swam right in front of us and I thought he'd shoot when they were closed, but he waited till they were swimming away till he finally put a shot in. I mean, I had to chase those things along the bottom. Fortunately, a couple slowed up enough that I could get one too. Man, that was hard work getting that second one. Oh, oh they. I think we'll shoot that one. No, I, I was going to shoot and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll let Ball Bag shoot first. And what the frig is he doing? I was like, oh, you shoot that one because I thought you were right next to me. Oh, mate, I was right next to you. I just didn't want to shoot first. Like, I, I always, I already shot a big jack and I'm like, I'll just let you shoot first. How's those snapper behind him? I was about to shoot a snapper on the way down. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. He just wouldn't quite sit still enough. No. Try to eat this? No. Yeah. That was going off. So going off. The next couple are mates that unfortunately don't live close by. Lee Mitchell, you've seen him in a number of previous episodes. And let me say, in the future, we've got some epic footage together where one of them in 45 minutes, I shoot three of the best fish of my life. But in this clip, Lee and I are diving together, but I can't actually remember what I was, what the clip's actually about. This clip with Lee was actually from when I was over with him in Western Australia. He dove, we'd been chumming, and we'd seen some nice snapper come through. Lee dove down, and one of the dumbest snapper I've seen just comes swimming straight up. Lee crushed it, PB for him. Shot, but I knew I was going to get him. Almost stoned you, mate. 
Definite PB that one, eh? Again, the next one is another mate that lives a long way away. This is my mate Hal Press. Hal lives over in the US. He was living here in Oz for a while and we dove together all the time. I actually went and visited him uh, a couple of years ago prior to COVID and we shot some striped bass. This is a clip from the day that Hal actually shot the world record Red Emperor. You'll probably see that if you go back through my older videos a day that none of us will ever forget, but this was actually the very last dive of the day. Hal decided he was gonna film me and dive without a gun. We hit the bottom and off in the distance, we could see some really nice jobfish. I waited, scratched, he was filming. It's quite cool footage as these jobfish just swimming in front of me. I finally picked a nice one, pulled the trigger, smoked off, incredible footage. Then in comes a big bull shark. It decided it wanted to eat my jobfish. hit the surface, we were laughing, going nuts. Incredible footage. That should be awesome footage, eh? It's so epic. That's it's freaking, epic footage that's epic. shark trying to eat it. I was right on the dog and shoot right through his head. And then the shark that's tried to eat it. I'm right there. Oh, man, it's epic. epic. Both these guys are uh, guys I love to dive with and it's a shame they live so far away. We often talk on the phone, keep connected, and spearfishing does that. It keeps us connected, keeps us excited. I love hearing their adventures, they love hearing mine. The very last one is a friend I dive with nearly every week. This clip, Andrew dives, chasing, stalking, a really nice snapper. Fish evades him a little bit, hangs off. but he makes a great shot, shoots for himself a six and a half kilo snapper. As you can see, I'm absolutely pumped for him. I love it when he shoots really good fish. Wait a second, set it. You want me to take a second shot? Yeah, yeah. Big one. Sorry Jonesy, you're a great diver and great friend and I enjoy diving with you every week. Now across this series, I hope you've got a lot out of this. I want to remind you how to get the most out of spearfishing, relax. The best way to relax, just enjoy it. We have the greatest lifestyle in the world which is spearfishing. Finally, find the right people to enjoy it with. I have lots of other friends and you're going to see many of them in the upcoming episodes as we continue to be out diving and capturing this great lifestyle of spearfishing. Now, I want to say to you, make sure you're getting out. 
make sure you're enjoying this lifestyle of spearfishing. Don't get caught up in everything else that's going on. Keep diving, keep enjoying it. And that's one thing that we from Spearfishing Down Under hope that you do. As always, we want you to like, subscribe, please share to your friends. We'd love to see others learn from this, hopefully grow, and be inspired to enjoy their spearfishing.